Hello. I made it. Hello. Oh, you said you guys be late. Well, it's if everything is perfect, I get here. But I'm at the <laughs> library. So if the room hadn't been open, then I wouldn't uh, be late. So I see. Yeah, so Jonathan can't make it today. He's off, run off his feet with his new job. Uh, but he said he can do the 22nd. Great. So I think there's been some interesting stuff on the Slack channel that maybe people can talk about. I'll use the, I didn't set up the notes ahead of time. I can do that. I just have to be a little quiet so I can scribe if you can do check-ins and call for agenda meeting, agenda making. And happy New Year. Indeed, yes. Hope you had a good relaxing time. So or awesome. non-relaxing, whatever you <laughs> I just put the notes in the Slack, in the chat. So there was a new proposed check-in format. I don't know if you saw that. You work check-in. While well, people are arriving, maybe we could, I will share. Maybe before check-ins, we could have a little chat about this format. What do you think, Justin? Yeah, we could do that. Let me I'm going to refresh my. Yeah, I mean, I think we we did that. I, we kind of did that last time, didn't we? We where we got people to, or we kind of, uh, at least tried tried to do that, where we got people to add themselves to the check-in list if they want to be on it. So we didn't go through everyone. But what was the? So I think at the bottom, there's like a specific suggestion here from Envy Ratchet from Martin. should also have project leads introduce themselves.
Shall we put new second? So that it's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Should be then separate. Sorry, I was just going to go on. I was going to say, should we separate the attendance or do you want to just do that on the fly? Sorry, I don't, don't quite follow. Sorry. Okay, Justin, you want to talk this over and I just have to be a little quiet because I'm in the library. So um, last time I got yelled at by speaking too loudly, even though I'm in a room, <laughs> apparently sound carries. Okay. So. You want to talk, okay. you know, just talk this over and talk about how you might do it and then. Yeah, so I, mean, I think that if we, uh, yeah, I, mean, I think if we ask people to, yeah, so any, uh, um, are we, are we kind of core right now? Let me just, are we, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah. So, so yeah. So rather than going through everybody asking them if, in turn if they've got updates, we're just going to go through the categories of um, asking people who are new to the group and how to introduce themselves, and people who have specific updates. If you could, um, first of all, please, everyone who's here, please put your name down on the attendance list at the top of the meeting notes. If um, the meeting notes are in the um in the chat or in the um i'll just make sure they're in the in, um in the slack channel as well um so yeah so, so first of all please put your name down in the attendance list if you're if you're here um and please also um if you want to, if you're if you're new and wants to do an intro, or if you've got specific updates, please um, indicate next to your name that you've got an update, or either update or new. Um, so just to, to introduce myself, I'm Justin Cormack. I'm facilitating this meeting. Um, I work in security. At Docker and I'm, and I'm a notary project maintainer. Um, I don't have any other specific updates except to say that Jonathan Meadows was going to speak today, but unfortunately, due to having a new job, he can't, but he will be rescheduling to talk on the 22nd about the um, tra security training for Kubernetes work that he did. Um, last year, which has been open source. And so it's going to introduce us to that. So um, please come along on the 22nd if you were hoping to get that today and you didn't. Um, um, Boleslav, you're new, you say you're new. You'd like to introduce yourself? Sure, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, not sure if you can see me, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm Bullock. I work at Red Hat. Uh, so I, I was actually the guy uh, coming with the key clock proposal to go into Sandbox, which I guess it's a bit on hold right now. But anyway, I'm uh, because I'm my field is security within Red Hat Middleware Group. I want to engage uh, uh, anyway in this in this sick. So happy to be here. here. And I, I, I managed to met some of you uh, at the KubeCon uh, 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 San Diego, which was awesome. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. Um, what What is actually the status of the key proposal? 
status is because we didn't have uh, two sponsors. Uh, uh, the PR was closed. Uh, it was kind of like driving. I do want to reapproach it again, uh, like to show that we, we addressed some of the feedback. But in any case, by the rules of the process, you need to have two and soon to be three TOC sponsor members. So, uh, and I, I understand also that right now, two of the member TOC board members will be uh, finishing the, their, their duty end of January and there will be new elections soon. So I also think it's not the best moment to open it up. So I'll probably reapproach it February or March again. Okay. Yeah. Is there anyone else who's new? There's no one else who's marked themselves as new, but anyone else new who is here? Okay, um, so Sarah, you want to talk about your election security? So just a little update, which might be interesting to the group. I've been learning about US election security because I have a, I live in the US and vote and I'm a little concerned about um, the fact that we don't have a process for that. Um, so there have, uh, I posted in the Slack channel, there was a hearing in November um, that I thought was pretty interesting. There's a upcoming hearing tomorrow at, I think, 10 a.m. Eastern, um, which um, I'm planning to watch. Uh, so, and I'm curious if anyone happens to know how election security happens in other countries. Because when I worked for the US government doing um, digital innovation, we learned a lot from the UK and other countries who were doing stuff online and open source. So if anybody lives in another country and happens to know about this, um, I'm curious. So I'm mostly learning about this as a citizen, um, but also, you know, I think voices are, who are smart and knowledgeable seem to be few and far between in this area, which is frightening. Um, the UK doesn't do any electronic voting at all. We'll have manual counting still. Um, you could learn from this, um, but um, I actually did have a conversation about Indian voting where they're going to do some trials soon and I know some people who are going to be building voting machines for the trials and I will find out more soon and I can put you in touch with them. Oh, that'd be really interesting. I think we might be going back to paper. Uh, the recommendation is to go back to, to paper ballots with optical um, recognition and then um, manual checks. But the key thing is to have an artifact that's human readable by the voter, which seems why. Yeah, I mean, the UK, we don't even do optical reading. It's all done by humans, um, which is, and um, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a, I think there's a lot of other countries. I don't know if anyone has experience about other countries. I think there's a lot of other countries that are doing. Um... Yeah, it's a little challenging in the US because like voting is a um, state's rights thing, right? Like states have their own governments and it's sort of more like the EU structurally from a government structure perspective, right? Except yeah. that it happened so long ago, we feel like we're one country, but we're not legally. <laughs> So it's a little complicated, but if anybody's interested in it, even just like learning about it, I'm learning about it and um, just I'll, I'll post things when I learn about them. So just thought it might be of interest to the group. Oh, and then um, it was kind of a long time open, but the intake process for security assessments PR got merged. So we have a formal um, like kind of blessed guidelines about priority of um, security assessments, but mostly things are, um, you know, kind of like the process itself of writing the self-assessment, it seems to be queuing things up gradually. So I'll add a link to that when there's a break in the note taking. Or anybody feel free to chime in. I think we are, we don't have a second note taker, so we'd love some help on the note taking. Um, if no one else has any comments on 
voting. Um, uh, Emily and Michael, you both said you want to talk about Security Day and other things. So uh, maybe you want to both talk about Security Day first, or um, I'll let Michael not, talk about Security Day. Yeah, um, we can just kind of gather ours together. Um, so we had a meeting yesterday. So we're starting off uh, kicking off weekly calls of the team leads and the six security chair, JJ, who's, um, who's working on it. And really all that we're trying to do right now is we're trying to get the uh, CFP opened up. So we're working with the CNCF on that. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, getting the website updated with content. Uh, one big question that we have, we have a lot of feedback from the retro, especially around format. Uh, and we need to yeah, figure out with the CNCF uh, what they think space-wise we're gonna have because the space allocated to the program or to the event really will drive what we can do from a, a program perspective. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we can get that figured out. But the goal is to get the CFP kind of drafted and ready to go by next Tuesday and then get the changes that we need to the website um, drafted and ready to go by hopefully next Tuesday and then hopefully getting both of those published uh, and out there. I do also want to uh, thank everyone on the call who uh, replied to the issue, uh, the six security issue around this day and volunteered to help both in helping to organize the event and also reviewing, um, reviewing the CFPs as well uh, once, once we get those in. So thank you to the entire six security uh, group uh, and those people who volunteered. And this is for Amsterdam or some other day? Yes, this is for Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yes. Yep, and we'll be updating the ticket with the Trello board um, so you all can follow along as we work through our planning. And for those of you that volunteered to help out with the organizational planning of it, stay tuned. We will be working through what our schedule looks like and all the things that have to happen. Okay? Yeah, and once we kind of figure out uh, what are the, the dangling things that are left open, we can then better then start to see how much work we actually have uh, to start pulling in additional volunteers. I know a lot of people volunteered to help. So thank you very much. Can we can we get a, um, a link to the, this, this issue in the doc, please? Um, um. Uh, but you, Michael, you also want to talk about Falco, I believe. Uh, just um, the other thing uh, was uh, we've officially announced, uh, and some of you might have already seen it on the TLC mailing list, and I'll let Chris chime in if she has anything else. Uh, Falco uh, is officially in as part uh, uh, of the CNCF at the incubation level. Uh, so thank you for everyone who supported that. Uh, and it's a very exciting time for the project, and we're, we're very excited for it. I'll just piggyback on that and say that uh, from the SIG security perspective, we kicked off the Falco assessment uh, process this week. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. Cool. Uh, Chris, did you have anything to say about Falco? To part of uh, on the Falco subject? I think just echoing uh, Ducey's sentiment here, just a lot of gratitude for everyone. We have a lot of work ahead of us uh, for the project, just getting it to a healthy state. So, you know, if, if folks want to get involved, we're, we're doing everything we can to, uh, to make the process as, as open and wholesome as possible. So love contributions from everyone here. What, what sort of contributions in particular are you looking for? I mean, everything from helping out with the build infrastructure to writing software to just generally mangling uh, things. Uh, one of the things we're working on right now is moving over to the CNCF Slack, uh, and we just need somebody to kind of help uh, create some structure here and, and make this happen. So we, uh, we do weekly calls every Wednesday morning, and we would invite everyone here to, to come and join and, and, and just be involved. Yeah, and uh, also one of the things that we're looking at is a lot of work around APIs and adding a lot of APIs into Falco. And so if that's something that you have expertise in, that would be another great thing to help out. Cool, thanks. Um, 
Emily, you want to talk about supply chain? Yeah, so um, there is an open PR uh, to update the supply chain index and catalog and definitions. Um, I'm working through uh, that ticket right now, but I did want to highlight for everybody that the uh, SIG Security Supply Chain um, repo was actually called out in a Medium article. I dropped that into the Slack channel, so that was a really big deal. Somebody is paying attention to some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, so if anybody has questions, uh, Santiago is kind of been leading that effort, but there is a lot of things that are going on in supply chain. More people are paying attention to it. So I think in general, we need help adding more events to that repository um, so people know what's going on, but also definitions of supply chain attack types. Those need to be fully flushed out. What's there is just an initial cut. So that's it. There was a conversation I saw about making it easier to kind of manage um, kind of sub projects because it's in the main repo and we were being a bit not very good at merging things. I don't know what the whether there was any thoughts about how we yes, should manage that. I was actually thinking that it would be great to make it like when once something's a subdirectory, we could say that that subdirectory has an owner and Brendan actually has a um, PR uh, uh, proposal out for um, for making like a software support of that, but we already have that sort of philosophically with the security assessments folder, and so that would just require adding that to the like adding something to governance that says that ongoing projects that have a subdirectory can, with I don't know two thirds chair approval or something, then be blessed. Um, so Santiago said he'd be happy to play that role on an ongoing basis to like merge things or whatever. Um, and Emily, I don't know whether you want to co, you know, participate in that, but we need it like a little tiny bit of process written up. And in my dreams, that would be written up in a way that wasn't specific to the supply chain proposal. So we could just like, you know, do this whenever it seems fitting. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that would make life much easier for, for things that are so we don't bottleneck things, yeah. Who, who? Does anybody feel inspired that? to write that up? Um, I think if somebody put in a ticket to update that work because there is another um, the roles and assessments guide for lead security reviewer in the dumb question phase also needs to be updated. Um, so that's just general documentation updates. So if somebody were to submit a ticket for it, at least if we have some cycles, we can go ahead and update the documentation based off of the ticket. I, I so don't know. I, oh, go ahead. I'm happy to write one up specifically about ongoing projects. I don't know exactly what the, um, I'm not surprised there. Think the documentation needs to be updated on security review rules, but I don't know the details yet. So, but, so basically I'll, I'll volunteer to write a ticket that's specifically about like sort of project subfolder maintenance. Okay. Um, and then maybe you could just file a ticket for the other thing. Yep. So just on the other thing, you, you mentioned the, the dumb question section of the security assessment lead. Uh, since I'll be going through that with Falco, if, if there's particular information you wanted updated, uh, assign that issue to me and I'll use myself as the guinea pig for that, that first rev of updates. That would be awesome. I don't know if I ca I was busy doing the previous thing. What? Oh, I Someone uh, mentioned that there there needs to be some clarity or some additions to the dumb questions section of the security lead documentation. Okay, I'll write an action item for that. Since Thanks, that's Robert. literally where we're about to be for Falco, I'll I'll volunteer to capture what we learn and put that in the documentation. Super, super. Really quick, just a note on being inclusive and <clears throat> making sure that the SIG is catering to all. Uh, is dumb the best word to use here? Definitely. Well, well, actually, it is 
I would welcome another proposal. The idea is this is we don't know what your project is. You are describing it to us. So we are going to intentionally ask all of the questions that we think the rest of the reviewers will have. So um, it is a, I, you know, if somebody wants to volunteer what that um, should be, but the whole goal of it is we are not asking security questions yet. We are asking clarifications. So, you know. Could I, could I suggest, suggest the word oblivious here? Or, or clarifying question? Yeah, either one. Or oh, naive. Yeah. So why don't, um, yeah, yes. So Robert, why don't you take the ticket and we can argue about wording on the ticket. In, I mean, brainstorm wording on the ticket. I would love the idea to do something yeah. that. Chris, I think you're, you're, you're objecting to the kind of the ADA connotation of dumb. Yeah, just having some friends who are a little bit sensitive to that wording. I just yep. think that we could, we could be a little more strategic about what our phrasing here. So, so you, okay. Thank you, Michael. So the, the concern is that it's synonymous with not being able to speak, not that it is connoting lack of intelligence. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, just to go back in, in a couple of overlapping topics about the security day and the supply chain. Um, I, and then I think there was some discussion a couple of sessions ago before the holiday break about doing kind of a red blue team exercise. So I'm not sure if anyone's interested in kind of merging those three things together. So kind of a red, red blue supply chain attack exercise at security day, that that would be something I'd be interested in, in making happen. Yeah, we're totally open um, to that. I think the only problem is, is space and room and we got to get uh, confirmation from the CNC of how much room we have to figure out what we can actually do content wise. Would the thing to do there be to submit a proposal in the CFP or and or or is it going to be something that's done separately from that? Um, I think it wouldn't hurt and Emily, please chime in. I think it wouldn't hurt to submit it via the CFP. That way we at least have all the material there and we can show it to the CNCF as what we want to do. Uh, and have all of the kind of abstract and what the content's going to look like. And then we can work with them to see if they can get us space or not. Yeah, so we would like it to go through the CFP. Um, I think that there is a potential because there have been a few people mention um, like a capture the flag activity or something to that effect. Um, and if we get multiple submissions for it, it should still be subject to like which one is the most robust or most relevant and go through the same kind of review process, but it is still like Michael said, contingent upon space availability. So having it go through the CFP provides that standard framework for evaluation against everybody of like um, submissions. Who is our point of contact at the CNCF for this? That's me. Um, sorry, just coming in off of mute. Um, we're actually getting rolling on this one next week, which is why we're kind of in the space of like, hmm, no, we will work on this next week. Um, we've got Megan Lane on our end as well, who will be working on this. I, I mean, who at the CNCF, like, do, are we working directly with any CNCF employees? Hi, this is Amy. Good to see you all. Oh, hey, Amy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that clarifies it for me. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> So I'd say if there were if there were overlapping proposals for that same kind of idea, whether capture the flag or red blue exercise, I'd I'd love to merge that in and just you know make the best of all proposals, consolidate that into one. I don't I don't it doesn't have to be my idea, for example. Yeah, like I said, we're totally open to it. It's we got to figure out space. We got to figure out what content we have available, and then. We're, we're more than willing to see if we can pull it off. So it's not a no, it's a we don't know, I guess. Uh, we, everyone likes the idea though. 
Yep, got it. So it's, I just, it's a meta CFP for anyone else who's thinking about it, just either add in the Google Doc or, or Slack me and we'll, I'm happy to add support to your existing idea or you, we can collaborate and merge a bunch of ideas together and then submit a single CFP, whichever works for anyone interested. Cool. Thanks, Robert. Um, new people, I missed Alexander Peters. Maybe you hadn't. So would you like to say, introduce yourself? <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry, I was a bit late, so I couldn't uh, right. join from the beginning. Um, hello, yeah, I'm I'm Go backend engineer, and um, yeah, I work on um, some admission controller at the moment, and um, also work with um, K Rails a bit, and um, so that that's why I found this uh, special interest group. And uh, I mean, I've been working with Kubernetes for some years now, but it's not that I got so involved deeply. So that's why I. I joined today and I'm, I'm interested to learn a bit more and contribute more in the future. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, Robert Tonic is marked as new on one of the lists, but not on the other one. I thought, Robert, you had introduced yourself before, but maybe I'm... Uh, no, I hadn't yet, but... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I am a security engineer at Trail of Bits. Uh, I worked on the Kubernetes and Rook assessments. Um, I had met, I believe, Sarah at KubeCon just in passing, and she mentioned that I should probably hop in and see what's going on. So I figured I would go ahead and do that. Are you working on any of other security assessments for CNCF at all, or is it just uh, the Kubernetes one? Not currently. OK. That being said, I don't know if that will change in the future. I'm not really sure as far as Well, there was some conversation, there was some discussion about uh, the Kubernetes one becoming an ongoing or kind of periodic thing, just because it's such a large thing. I don't know. Gotcha. I'm not involved in those processes at Trail of it, so that would be my manager. Right. Well, welcome anyway. Thank you for Thank coming you. by. Um, have we got anyone else who hasn't done an update who would like to? It looks like Mark Underwood. Oh, ah, yeah. Okay. Yes, Mark. Yes, this big data. Ah, Mark is okay. Mark is read only, so um, so the notes are in the in the document. But there's a, going to be a June workshop in Washington D.C., um, which people will be invited to. Okay, um, and anyone from the other active project leads who's here policy. Where can we find details on this workshop in DC? He says we will be invited. So I think hopefully let's um, uh, let's just stick a note in there to follow up. He's, he's sorry. He's, he says his read his read only in this meeting. So um, um, maybe we could put an action for Mark to follow up with details in the agenda, and we can follow up next week. Have we got anyone else from any of the other um, working groups? Or? Eric is on. Yeah, I don't have any particular updates since we haven't met yet for the new year. And are you having a meeting this afternoon is... for people who are maybe new to the yeah. group? Yes, we 
are having the meeting at, let's see, what time would that be? In three hours or so? So this I believe is it's 3 so it's, p.m. Pacific time, or 3 p.m. Pacific time. And we now have it in the README. We have an update to the README where we have ongoing projects. So we have the policy team. This is actually 4 p.m. Pacific. Does it say, yeah, I think we, it's very confusing because of daylight savings. Um. <laughs> In China. I think we should just pin on UTC. Um, okay, I agree. I have it as three o'clock Pacific on my calendar. Yeah, let's. Could you do I a quick will, PR and I can? That's what that. I will do right now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if, from the cloud custodian discussion, Erica, are we going to uh, do tackle? Not to put you on the spot, but whether you were going to lead cloud custodian or? Yeah, I am for it i am have still even looking i haven't like gotten going on that really um but if you all will have me i would be honored well sorry Kate, what, what is that the cloud cloud custodian project is for undergoing the security review for its inception into the cncf is that correct um, so it's not, it doesn't block inception, but we want to kick off a, we want to queue up the security review because that'll feed into the process. Um, so they were going to do a self-assessment and then we were going to assemble a security review team. So um, I think there's an issue for that. If somebody could, um, let me dig it up unless somebody has it handy. Yeah, and, and my recollection is before the break, several Folks, myself included, volunteered to participate, but no one could, none of us have the time to be lead uh, on Cloud Custodian. Um, though I, I assured uh, Erica that I would certainly help as I go through the Falco lead process, I will dump all the knowledge capture her way and help her through that process. But I think we were, the, 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 the gap was that no one had raised their hand as lead and Erica valiantly said that she would should we consider that? Uh, I might be able to lead that, potentially. That would, yeah, so I think we want to have somebody on the team. I mean, Robert will have, there'll be continuity from other things, from other, we, we, we need to make sure we have the continuity on the process. So Erica, would be great to have the policy, somebody who's actively involved in the policy subgroup involved. So, um, yeah, Justin, maybe you and Erica can chat offline and figure that out. I linked to the issue in the chat. Okay, I just found it too and stuck it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Robert, could you link to the, wasn't there a, the process part for this that got merged? Or part of it. There, there's an outline in the uh, documentation about the security lead. Yes. I will bring it up. Oop. Broken link. I can fix that. So this has the like details on the security reviewer. And then the process, which, you know, we're still in our first five assessments where every time we do assessment, we update the process a little bit, but we're getting two very detailed refinements, which is so exciting. Um, so this is the overall outline. And so, um, 
cloud custodian might be unique in that not only is it raising its hand for an assessment, but I think it, the idea is that it's also kind of looking for a home, whereas you know OPA and others and Falco already have a long-term home. Cloud custodian might need policy work group to, for lack of a better word, own it going forward. So that's just another it's orthogonal to assessment, but just topic. To what, what do you mean by own it exactly? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> if, there's, <laughs> if there's folks from the custodian team on, they can they could probably speak to that. But my from a couple of weeks ago when we had a session, uh, policy work group call. I think that's what the ask was, is that they, they've been maintaining the project, but they'd love to home it somewhere under Stinska. So just to add some clarity, uh, Heiz Kapil from the Cloud Custodian Project, uh, we, are, we are looking to incubate within CNCF is what our goal is uh, around the assessment process itself. Okay. Uh, and that we put as a prerequisite as part of the new incubation sandbox process was to go through the uh, six security assessment is my understanding. Okay, got it. Then, so, I, then maybe I got some wires crossed there. So. Yeah, I think that the there is this sense that each of the SIGs like has a set of projects that it are like kind of under their domain, right? And so um, all of the security and policy focused projects are sort of like under our umbrella as SIG security where we pay special attention to them. Um, and yet we want to make sure that each of the projects has its own team that is active, kind of independent of the rotating leadership of the SIG. Um, so I think that that's kind of consistent with what's going on with, you know, other projects. And I think part of the, um, the exciting thing that I've heard that Cloud Consodian is going through is being like primarily single vendor supported to being much more of a, like moving to CNCF is much more of a multi-vendor Thing, which I think it sounds like it's been happening, right? And now it's more of a decision to bless that. Is, is that a good description of it, Kapil? Uh I would say that, you know, we are already multi-vendor per se. Um, we have been for a while. I think the, I think it's more that we've grown past the original sponsorship uh, of Custodian was by Capital One and uh, they're no longer an active maintain. They don't have any active maintainers currently. So we're looking to say what's a good sort of home for the project long term for it to continue to grow. You know, we're up to like 230 contributors. We have multiple cloud providers contributing code, and so it's trying to find a good neutral home for increased collaboration and, and community. Super. I think I'm in a uh, quiet enough space that I can share uh, an update on uh, the TSE meeting from yesterday, if uh, that fits in. Yep, yep, go on. Um, so I, I shared our, our update yesterday, um, you know, dove into uh, assessments, uh, shared out the um, definitions that we're working in, uh, in uh, the, um, oh dear, what is it? The supply uh, chain security. Supply chain, not offline attacks. Uh, supply chain attacks. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, got, got some you know, good feedback. Uh, you know, the, the text around uh, kind of the annual cycles around uh, reviewing uh, projects. Uh, you know, it was a bit unclear, so we got some feedback on that. Uh, and see, we'll, we'll clarify that, and, and also, um, you know, those parts of you know our workflows are really sort of future-looking, right? We we're refining in the uh, you know phase three and four, uh, and you know that how that really fits in, um, you know, next year and beyond. Um, you know, kind of need next year and beyond. But uh, yeah, our definition of how we'll pick that up, uh, you know, looks like it needs a little bit of feedback. We had we spent some time on discussion around that. Then, um, you know, kind of the the backdrop to that is um, today there are, um, you know, quite a number of uh, new SIGs, right? We kind of went through this process when we when we went from being a working group to a SIG of, uh, oh my goodness, like. 
uh, like we should be doing as few as possible SIGs. Uh, and you know, now we're, we're kind of uh, on the other end of the spectrum where there's uh, definitely a proliferation of SIGs and you know, the beginnings of uh, you know, a, a bit of a pushback from uh, projects where you know, now that there are so many SIGs, uh, you know, finding that home and having to go around and, um, and you know, figure out where you belong uh, is a bit cumbersome. So uh, you know, it's a nice ask to begin to uh, you know, explore how we uh, improve that process and streamline that, uh, you know, find the, the right balance between uh, you know, delegating and you know, supporting the groups that, that are coming in with, with, without the context of uh, you know, knowing how uh, everything is, is operating, where they should, get, should go. Um, then, what else? Uh, oh, uh, the community group, uh, you know, near and dear to my heart, um, the Kubernetes, uh, Paris, who leads the uh, um, Kubernetes community, I believe, um, has a proposal basically to do uh, a broader community initiative inside the CNCF uh, and kick off a thing there. Uh, I was a part of creating the community committee inside of the Node.js Foundation. Uh, so that's something near and dear to my heart. So I'm really happy to see, um, you know, the, the end end user, uh, you know, really get uh, uh, added to the, the matrix of, of the, um, you know, groups that we're serving. That's all. Happy to answer questions. I also linked the slides from the meeting from yesterday's meeting awesome. to the meeting notes. Yeah, it's mostly a SIG discussion yesterday. Yeah, so yeah, because there was a discussion about how about this kind of loose loose affiliation of projects to SIGs, or, or, you know, there was some discussion right. about some projects yeah. fitting in multiple places uh, and having to be having to be shared. Right. Um, I don't think we have a kind of official list of which projects we consider we own. Or... Yes, we do. Right. Oh, do we? Do we? We... we absolutely oh. have that. So the okay. projects, the, the, the initiative started, the SIG initiative started out with Quentin and Alexis looking at all the CNCF projects and dividing them into areas. Huh. And then with the concept that every project would be kind of slotted in to one and only one SIG, even though that there is overlap, there would be ownership by one. That was the initial concept so that the SIGs would span the full space of cloud native. And that's in the TOC repo somewhere. And, yeah. um, and so we have, I said, a list of projects that are like our projects. And those are the projects that like, when the security assessment thing, we talk about security providers versus projects that, of course, every project should have, almost every project, except like a project that is purely like a library that's used in the context of another service or something, should have some, you know, security concerns. Um, and then other things like it's like, well, is that storage or runtime when it does a little of both? But the original concept was that everything would be owned by one and only one SIG, but then of course other SIGs would participate, we coordinate. And then as the this has all evolved, you know, and then there's been rotations off of the TOC, there's now it's an open question of like, well, that was the original concept. Is that how it's playing out? Is that really how what we want to do? And there's a there's redundancy in, from my perspective, in what's some of the process stuff that's happening across SIDs, SIGs, but the TOC is sort of reluctant to tell, could to be too top down about how the SIG should run themselves because we do kind of different things and you don't want to have too much like, there's like, we want there to be like oversight without slow down. <laughs> And how do we do that? Because the TOC has been a bottleneck for a lot of things and they're sensitive to that, which is great that they're sensitive to that. Yet there's a lot of new SIGs that are, that where individuals were recruited to lead a SIG and they're like, okay, what do I do? And, you know, we're hearing crickets on that. So, um, so it's just, a, I think there's a little um, discussion 
about what is the role of the SIG versus the TOC, what's a delegation, you know, what, oh, you know, what are the checks and balances with oversights, how do we communicate? Um, and there's an openness to maybe that first list isn't the be all and end all. And so, um, so I think that that's just an ongoing discovery as these six get stood up. But I think right now there is the number of SIGs is fewer than that initial list. Um, I think the one on that initial list that isn't a SIG yet is observability, where they were looking for people to lead that SIG because it's felt that that's important. Um, um, yet there isn't a SIG around that yet. Um, but some of the other SIGs are like, well, we have this really giant space that's been handed to us. Could we decide a narrower space? And so that's then, a, and then like, okay, what happens to everything outside that space if the leaders decide on a narrower space? Do we recruit new, like, do, you know, how is that? How, how do we divide up the space, right? And handle new projects coming in and sorting them and making it so that everybody isn't doing everything and things are logically spread out across people for efficiency. So that's kind of what's going on. But the good news is Amy has just set up like a, now we have a Slack channel uh, for the SIG chairs to talk to each other in the TOC. And we had a nice meeting at KubeCon in San Diego where the SIG chairs got together and kind of like shared what we're doing. And we've decided we're gonna do that every KubeCon. So this is, I think, a positive sign, right? That we're um, talking amongst ourselves and, and sharing what um, what we're doing and the storage SIG is coming up with like a due diligence process that they're um, kind of working on where um, one of the things that you know like we may not do depending on the speed at which new projects come in um, we may not want like have the bandwidth to do a full security assessment for each project. And so there's a smaller due diligence phase potentially, right? So maybe like some of the things we've batted around is um, maybe we require a self-assessment and we fill out some kind of due diligence template, right? Which includes things that are not directly related to the security of the project, um, but might be more related to stuff that we don't typically weigh in on, which is like, how play native is it? How useful is it? How needed is it by the community, right? Do we do that? Does the TOC do that? There is some kind of vetting of the needfulness of this project, which is happens in some, you know, kind of informal, mysterious way right now. <laughs> so yeah i think it would i think it would definitely make sense for us to at least collect some opinions on needfulness and present and present them as a coherent thing to the cncf rather than them having to you know a, a, you know in a fairly public sort of way you know do you want to submit something about whether you think this is a good idea as a as a SIG security member because you have an opinion on this, but okay. I think it would make sense because. Yeah, I think that like, because with the sort of people who who know people who or ourselves need these things, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, I think people. I think some of the challenge with the people in this group that I've heard is sometimes sometimes people feel like they can't speak for their company. And so we want to figure out how to frame the opinions so that they are, you know, so that that gets met in some way, right? And then I think people are comfortable asserting that things are needed if they have data about that. But then people are a little uncomfortable saying that things are not needed, right? And so we're just trying to figure out how we can do this in a way that is transparent and provides useful information. Yet, um, you know, people are comfortable feeling saying honest things about yeah. whatever's going on. But yeah, I think that we're part of the point of the SIGs is that we gather, you know, experts in a domain and we can all chime in and the TOC 
some years has a bunch of security experts, some years doesn't. <laughs> and they can't always control the expertise across the TOC. I think they make an effort to, but because there's voting and there's, you know, there's like a lot of different but, things yeah. to take into account. They don't always have expertise in every single area. Yeah, I mean, security is a very big area. There, there are lots of, it's a very broad thing that you may be, even if you're someone on the TOC with security expertise, there still may be things you don't know anything about in security. Or, yeah. or not enough to give a, have a useful opinion. I know. That's, that's... Um, have we got anyone else who would like to say anything? There's... Um, Any, any anyone at all who I've missed or didn't mark that I wanted to say something or suddenly thought of something they must say? Do we have a, are we queued up for next week? Because we were, we've kind of, um, we were gonna have a presentation this week. January 15th was gonna be a working meeting. Um, I just wanted to, we don't have a meeting facilitator. Does anybody want to volunteer? Um, otherwise, I'll rabble rouse. For those of you who are new, we have um, a role after you've been to um, a couple of meetings and served as a scribe a couple of times, then you too can be a meeting facilitator. And it's like super helpful to um, have members of the group volunteer to um, facilitate whatever um, whatever's coming up. So, um, so I just wanted to make a plug for that, and um, you can you too can read our exciting governance docs, um, which are um, I'll get a little lengthy, but the goal is to uh, create enough process that people can just step in and do stuff um, without too much rigmarole, which seems to be working because we got a lot of cool stuff going on. Sir, I'm happy to facilitate next week. This is juicy. Thank you, Michael. And we can sync up offline about agenda items in advance. Okay. But yeah, if you if anyone has any other agenda items, please add them. Or open an issue or bring us or any of those things. Um, I'm still trying to chase the one that I put down, but I haven't got in touch with Stephen yet, so I'll try and get that okay. in, in the next yeah. few weeks. Yeah, and usually what we do when we have a working meeting session is like Brendan and me and like other people who do a lot of GitHub stuff will go through and see if there are GitHub issues that just need a little discussion and then we can close them. Um, sometimes it's hard to take these things to a close with entirely async. Um, discussion. So, uh, so yeah, sometimes they benefit from some live discussion to, to iron out the last little wrinkles and things. Or just to share some of the great work that's being done in terms of documenting practices. Okay, well, I think we're done then. Happy Thank New Year, everyone. everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.